Praise the Lord. Good morning, IPC Hebron. I thank the Lord for this other op opportunity to come before you with the word of God. We've been studying about Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Um, after a couple of weeks of break, we will go back to this portion. Jesus Christ, who came man to save sinners. We talked about the forerunners, his birth, his early life, and we talked about his entry into public ministry. And now we're talking about the calling of the disciples. We've had a chance to talk about Simon, Andrew, James and John, Thomas, uh, among many. But today we will talk about uh, another disciple that was called and the sermon I titled, From Deceiver into Disciple. From Deceiver into Disciple, the story of a most unlikely call. And you can see this portion in the Synoptic Gospels, in Matthew, Luke, and Mark, the portions are mentioned there. Let me give you a little backstory. So the Jewish people were under the oppression of Rome, and uh, specifically Galilee was under the rulership of uh, Herod, Herod Antipas, at the time of Jesus. And we know that uh, for Rome, instead of collecting taxes directly, they had Jewish people do their dirty work. They had people that would be able to bid and get the highest bid. In other words, this was something that they would pay the taxes ahead of time, and then they can go and collect as much taxes as they want. And such a profession was the name of the person we'll speak about today, Levi, or Levi in Hebrew. Um, and also, uh, his Christian name is Matthew. Matthew, uh, who wrote the first book of the New Testament, the disciple of Jesus, is who I'm referring to. Um, in Aramaic, there's a word, P-A-B-B-A-I, to buy. It's an Aramaic word that means tax collector. And uh, I heard a joke that said, you can say goodbye to your money. their number, and so they were despised in every way, in every culture, and considered traitors to their own nation. Association with the publican itself 
would automatically cast suspicion on a person's character and reputation. They were considered the worst of the worst. And as Jesus is walking by Capernaum, he sees and looks into the eyes of a man that is in such a state with a bad reputation, full of corruption, full of extortion, full of uh, uh, money-hungry, uh, dirty tactics, and considered the worst of the worst. And Jesus speaks to him, and those are the portions that I mentioned. He pointed to him and said, you are going to be part of my friend group, discipleship, and you will be an apostle that writes the first book in the New Testament. And let's look at that story. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 through 13, Jesus calls Matthew. And Matthew refers himself to himself as Matthew, but the other, uh, Mark and Luke, refers to him as Levi. Let's read verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. You know, uh, Luke, the physician, uh, has another word added uh, that says immediately he followed him or uh, arose right away and followed him. So this was not an indecisive decision. Matthew had made a decision um, and decided to follow him. Matthew, in his heart of hearts, might have thought that he was irredeemable, that nobody wanted him, that he was the worst of society. You can think of him as the scum on the top of water that uh, makes something dirty, right? He was the scum of society. He thought that nobody wanted him. He was not worthy to be called by any rabbi, let alone the man that had been doing uh, many wonders and miracles among them. But Jesus stopped and saw in the eyes of Matthew his future. Jo Jesus saw that he would be a great disciple that would be useful for the kingdom of God, that the skills that he had as a tax collector to keep good records, to write, uh, would be useful for him in the kingdom of God. And he said, follow me. And without any hesitation, we see Matthew he rose immediately and followed him. Not only did Matthew decide to follow him, Jesus, he had a party at his house. As Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. Many of his old friends, tax collectors and sinners. You see, that's how bad tax collectors were. They didn't just call them plain sinners. They said goodbye to your money, and they had a special characteristics as tax collectors. And many of those were in this party, and so were sinners, and they were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. After Matthew got this call, he did not want to keep this to himself. You see, he had a party at his house, and many of the people that he used to associate with, it is spheres of influence whether you are in the medical field or you are in any uh, engineering field or any other way of life, your neighbors, if you have that call, follow me, and you have had that true repentance and you're following Jesus wholeheartedly, you don't want to keep this to yourself. You will tell others and bring others to Christ. But there was a group of people looking uh, there, and their name were the Pharisees. The Pharisees, what does it say? When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The Pharisees were Jewish people who had kept the law to a T. They were dutiful in giving their tithe. They thought they were self-righteous. They thought they can do things properly. And by keeping rules and regulations, they could achieve uh, closeness to God in their religion. But they saw this and said, how could this be? How could Jesus eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when he heard this, what did Jesus say? He said a couple of things that we can look deeper into. 
Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. You know, as a pediatrician, uh, we're taught that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But here Jesus was talking about the sickness of sin. Those who are without sin don't need a doctor, right? If you think you're self-righteous, if you think just by your good works you can earn heaven, if you think you can sit and meditate and earn heaven, uh, the, he was speaking to them, those who are well do not need a physician, but those who are sick. But this is the condition of all of mankind that are born after Adam's sin. There is the original sin from the baby that is born into, from the mother's womb. There is original sin, and it would have been good if for us to understand that we are sick. We are born sick. We need the great physician, the Lord Jesus, in our lives, and not our self-righteousness or any other way to earn salvation. And Jesus also says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I come not to call the righteous, but sinners. I, for I come not, not to call the righteous, but the sinners. We'll start with that first portion that said, follow me. Follow me was that word that was used to many of the disciples, but here in particular to Matthew or Levi, there is that follow me. And I don't know if Jesus was saying a, a pun on words here, but a disciple in Greek is matetis. That's the word. Matetis. Um, and it means an adherent uh, of a teacher, more than a mere fan. It's good to be a fan of a team, and when they have good times, you enjoy it. But this is more than a call to be a fan. This is a call to be a disciple or a follower. And that's the word that we get the word mathematics from, a person who learns by instruction from another person. Mathematics. And so discipleship means intentional learning by inquiry and observation. So when Jesus looked onto the eyes of Matthew and said, follow me, it wasn't just two little words. There was deep intention behind that. It was, Levi, come and be a mathetes or a disciple. Uh, be uh, someone who learns of me. Be someone who learns of the way of the Lord. You think that a kingdom would come where the Jewish people would get out of the oppression of Rome, but that is not how the Lord intended it. The Lord intended his kingdom in a way that you did not think. And we know about how the book of Matthew is talking about the kingdom of God, and it talks about the various ways the kingdom of God is uh, through Jesus, right? A mustard seed that grows into a tree. We, talk, we learn about the ways uh, and many different ways about the kingdom of God and Matthew was getting a revelation of that. Levi, uh, in his portion, uh, Luke, in his portion, calls him Levi instead. And uh, you see, he left everything. That was uh, th something that stood out to me, verse 28. When he got the calling from Jesus to follow me, Levi left everything. Now, when we say he left everything, it might seem like it's an easy thing to leave everything. But no, he likely had paid millions of dollars to collect taxes, right? He had a lot of things to lose financially. But what he saw was not the finances. What he saw was a master, the creator of the universe, calling him to say, come into relationship with me. And so he was willing to leave everything. He rose and followed him. And we see that there was a great feast in his house. Not only did he want to follow, but he wanted others to hear. And there was a large company of sinners and tax collectors reclining with Jesus. And we see the Pharisees grumbling again. And we see that Jesus is repeating this. Only the sick need the physician, uh, not the ones who are well. I have come to call the righteous, but uh, not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So what's in a name? I was thinking, you know, the word Levi or Levi means joined or attached in Hebrew. He was the third son of Jacob and Leah. It's a Jewish name, one of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? 
We know Moses and Aaron was part of this priestly class of Israelites. The Levites were the priests. And it's profound irony that a man who was part of the Levite tribe is selling out the Jews and betraying his own people by working for Herod and the Romans. He's receiving tax money from the other tribes and was using it for his lavish lifestyle and his sustenance. He had become a sellout. Even though he was joined and attached by heritage to the Jewish people, he had now become a sellout and he had joined the oppressors and he was worse than a sinner. He was a tax collector that hurted his own people. But Jesus, in his Christian name, calls him Matthew, which means gift of God or gift of Yahweh. And that comes from the Hebrew name Matiahu. This name embodies that idea that Matthew would become a divine blessing. You can't see it now. He is a dirty tax collector, but God saw in him a divine blessing, a precious gift that was bestowed upon him and would become the person that writes the first book of the New Testament. Um, and he wrote the first gospel we know. He was one of the more educated disciples, and he ultimately, as we'll go into, became a martyr in Ethiopia. So by becoming Matthew, Levi was becoming a true Levite, right? He was uh, helping minister and healing the wounds of the people. We see that he ministers to the Jewish people first and then also to the Gentiles. And that was another thing that stood out to me. You know, uh, the kingdom of heaven, they thought, would only come to the Jews as the Jews was waiting for their Messiah. But Jesus came into his own and the, his own received him not. And thank God that each person sitting here who is not a Jew can have this gift of God that can say, I was once a wild olive, but I have been grafted into the family of God. And thank God for that. Because of the betrayal of the Jewish people, of the one and true Messiah, there is now the opportunity for us to be part of the kingdom of God. We see Mark also goes into details about this particular story. But I now want to focus on a couple of the uh, verses that are towards the end. And one of those verses is, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. And uh, in another portion, it says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. We Here we see that it is a quote from Hosea 6, verse 6, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offering. In a previous sermon, we have talked about the hesed of God, the loving kindness and the mercy of God. And it is the duty of each one of us that have experienced the hesed of God to love our Lord, our God, with all our heart and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So when Jesus was referring back to this portion, he is emphasizing authentic worship. The sanctuary that Pastor John Verghese was talking about the last few weeks, it, when we come into his presence, we are to pour ourselves before him. It is not based upon any rituals. It is to prioritize mercy over others and to have a deep understanding of the love of the Lord vertically so that we can show that love of the Lord horizontally to others. I desire mercy and not sacrifice is again mentioned in Matthew 12 verse 7. And so the particular portion that came to my mind with this um, I was not able to put on a slide, but if you would go to Luke 18, verse 9 onwards, I like to emphasize this. Once there was a Pharisee and a tax collector who came to the Lord. Jesus told this parable. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. You see the posture of their heart and how it's different. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed and said, God, 
I thank you that I am not like the other men, the extortioners, the unjust, the adulterers, or even like this tax collector that's standing there. You see the posture of his heart. This is what having an attitude of a Pharisee is like, that God owes you something. By because of your good works, God owes you something. Or because of your heritage and how, you, how good you follow the rules, that God owes you something is the attitude that the Pharisee comes with. He says, I fast twice a week and I give tithes and all that I get. But now we see the tax collector. The tax collector was not even bold enough to come. He was standing afar off. He would not even lift his eyes to heaven. He was so ashamed. He would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And this is the posture of a heart of each and every person as we go into a time of worship. God, I am a sinner. I am in need of your mercy and grace once again. Not because of anything that I do. Not because of the mission work that I do. Not because of the Sunday school that I teach. Not because of how good I am last week. But only by the divine mercy of the Lord can I come to you. And the Lord said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, the tax collector, rather than the other, the Pharisee. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The call to be a disciple is not an easy call. As Brother Ebby preached on uh, two weeks ago, take up your cross and follow him is a call to suffering. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. It is not into the lapse of luxury. It is a call of following me into times of trouble and difficulties, but the Lord knowing that we trust in a Lord who was able to sustain us no matter what. Whoever would save his life would lose it, but whoever would lose his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his souls, or his forfeits himself? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words on him, uh, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. And we have, as Matthew concludes his book, a responsibility to make more mathetes, disciples, in our spheres of influence. Jesus said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So Matthew had a true transformation. As I said, he was the scum of society. He was hated and he experienced the hesed, the great mercy of the Lord. He was crooked and he experienced the charis or the grace of the Lord. He was greedy and he became generous. He was ruthless and he was redeemed by the Lord Jesus and his call. He was a deceiver and he became a true disciple. He changed into a matitis, a true disciple of Christ. He was selfish and he became selfless. He was a sinner and he became a saint, not by self-righteousness, but by the imputed blood of the Lord Jesus. As we are going to stand here in a minute or two to worship, uh, that, let that be the attitude of our heart. Betrayer Levi becomes a blessed Matthew. He had a lifelong service. He's mentioned in all three of the synoptic gospels. He's traditionally regarded as the author of the gospel of Matthew. And because of his unique background, he mentions coins and debts and money so much more than any of the other physician or others that wrote the books. In the Fox's book of Martyr, it says that he had gone, first he stayed and wrote uh, to the Jews, and then he had gone to Parthia and Ethiopia, which is the place that that weapon that's shown there, a halbred, which has a pole, a hook, and a knife was used. History tells us that he was killed for the Lord in Ethiopia. And now we know there are more Christians in Ethiopia uh, than there are not. 
So there's many lessons to learn. God can use anyone, use anyone to help him, and that no one is irredeemable. You know, we know that story from, I think, Kerala of Madras Lemon, right? We know that he had killed so many, but in this prison, the Lord worked with him, and he's now a servant of God, Rennie. No one is irredeemable. We should not feel unqualified because of our appearance or lack of education or wicked past. Jesus sees in us whether we have a sincere commitment, sees our future, and says, come follow me. Do we accept that call? And then if we do accept, are we willing to be a true disciple? We should always remember that more than being a physician, more than being an engineer, more than being a financier, that the highest calling in our life is to serve God. No matter what the world might say, the world might say that the achievements of the world are greater, but the word of God says, and Levi became Matthew. He left everything and followed Jesus and was willing to suffer with Christ, even die as a martyr in Ethiopia. Money, power, and fame cannot compare with bringing a true disciple of Christ. Let me end by a few lyrics from a song that you guys always hear on the radio. Thank you, Jesus. A song by Josh Baldwin as we go into a time of worship. As we prepare our hearts, let's listen to these words. Thank you, Jesus, for finding me. Like a good shepherd, your mercy leads me back to your arms where I'm meant to be. So I thank you, Jesus, for finding me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You took my place on that cursed tree, died for sinners, but rose as a king. So I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Because it's only because of what you've done that I've been called a friend of God. Oh, beautiful Savior, what else can I do but lift my voice to say thank you? So thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Shame lost its hold when you set me free. Every fear has to bow at your feet. So I thank you, Jesus, for loving me. And I enter the gates of the Lord. As we stand to our feet, let us enter the gate of the Lord with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Enter his sanctuary with praise. And let us talk to our God, saying, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. No matter how good you think you lived, knowingly and unknowingly, there has been sin in your life. And if that is the case, there is forgiveness at the feet of Jesus. If you come to him with the right posture, the right heart that says, Lord, forgive me, as the tax collector did. And we see a tax collector exemplified in Matthew, a levy that became a Matthew, a gift of God. Let us be gifts of God for the world these days. May God bless you all.